Hello everyone, welcome back to the studio of Magic of Innovation 2020. We have a special guest coming to us, that is Judith Zoanai, the CEO of MetLife Hungary and Bulgaria, and we are going to discuss all the leadership difficulties out there regarding these special times that we are living through. Enjoy. Judith, welcome to Magic of Innovation 2020. Hi everyone, it's good to be here. Thank you for joining us. Before we dive into the major issues of being a female leader and how to handle all this craziness, I would like to ask a semi-personal question. How have you been handling the situation in these past few months? How, how could you live up to all the challenges that you had to face right now? Um, so it's amazing time. I think, uh, of course, First of all, it was uh, very shocking uh, what's going on and, uh, and how we are going to, to create uh, the circumstances, make the business continue and, uh, and um, you know, the show must go on, and especially I'm working for an American company, so it cannot happen that the business is not going on. Um, that was partly a personal um, part, which means that uh, I really liked it because it's really all about leadership. Uh, it's the situation when leadership makes sense. Uh, and even uh, you even have a little bit more um, um, time and also um, a floor to use all your skills and competencies. So personally, I really enjoyed it. Uh, on the other hand side, um, of course, um, what I found out after the so-called lockdown, uh, after one to two weeks, that people are, are really, really freezed. And, uh, and there were big differences how people reacted, uh, but the majority were free. So I had to really find out the way how I'm going to you know, cut this uh, kind of feeling and all the circumstances and create immediately a kind of new normal which, uh, which creates a kind of bubble for all my people uh, in order to understand that this is not the end of the life and this is not the end of the, of the world, this is just a specific situation and we need to find out the way how we can overcome the situation. So, so that is from leadership point of view. I was excited, I'm still excited. Okay. Uh, from personal point of view, you know, uh, having with all my family <laughs> at home, uh, with, with three kids, a dog, and my husband, who is a medical doctor, so okay. he, was, he was not able to go right anywhere. Right in the middle of it. <laughs> and so I, I need to find out a new way of working and, uh, and handle the situation that I'm not able to dress up uh, in the beginning. So, um, so lots of things which were so quite new for me. But finally, step by step, I could overcome. And last but not at least, uh, I need to find out, I needed to find out a kind of new daily habits. Uh, so all in all, uh, I think uh, we learned a lot. Um, uh, we, we, we found out that everything is possible without face-to-face -face connection, even in life insurance. Uh, on the other hand side, uh, we were really lucky enough uh, here in Hungary uh, because the situation was not as serious as probably in other countries. Uh, so all in all, a uh, good lesson, exciting leadership time, uh, and personally, I'm very close to my family still. <laughs> okay, that's really good to hear. Um, some say that in order to reach a better level of communication and leadership in all the different industries, we have to lean towards a more feminine way of communication. What do you think about that and how do you consider your identity and gender when it comes to leadership, handling the situation? Do you consider yourself a female leader or is it something that needs to be put aside and not that interesting at all for you? So I would be happy if um, we can discuss, we, we should not discuss about this topic anymore in conferences. Okay. Of course you're right, we need to discuss because we are not in the situation, but this is my personal wish, honestly, because uh, 
I'm a person, I'm, I'm, I'm a human, and, okay. and, and my job is to lead people, lead company, and make business. Uh, um, it's by accident, or who knows, uh, uh, it's, it's the decision of God that I am a female. Uh, so th these are the things what I can use in my leadership role. Uh, uh, what I can imagine that the personality itself and the, the, the so-called soft skills, uh, probably we need to use a little bit more and more in the leadership because everything are different. People are not sitting in the office anymore. Everybody in home office. So you need to have some other kind of glue in order to keep the teams together. So definitely, I think there are some skills and competencies which probably a little bit more easier to handle or use by females. But all in all, I'm more a fan of um, kind of um, leadership where you can use lots of kind of tools and you are using based on the person who you are dealing with or based on the situation. Um, so it means that flexibility is, I think, what we need as leaders at the moment. Uh, yes, we need to communicate very, very much, uh, very frequently, uh, very carefully, because it's a kind of crisis situation. You should not sit in your office anymore. Uh, and last but not least, I think one of the takeaway from leadership point of view, this uh, situation is that uh, that uh, that nothing. Carve, nothing is carved in stones, which means that uh, which means that uh, that that every day you can find out something new. Every day you, as person, as leader, can also question lots of other things. Uh, so it means that this open but still growth mindset, because business should goes on. So these are my three things which I would consider that leaders need it, whether they are females or men. Uh, uh, but directly answering to your question, uh, I think what I miss, see the, the opposite side, what I miss is the personal touch, the personal connections, because this is something which I really like and really using in my leadership role. Um, and, uh, and this is not as the same when you have FaceTime or, or Webex or Zoom meetings. Uh, and yes, we need to also learn these kind of things because it's definitely uh, slightly different than uh, having uh, everyone in one meeting room or having one-on-one or, or drinking a coffee together. So my wish is that uh, I know that this kind of word somehow will remain with us. You know, Zoom meetings, Webex meeting will create probably more efficient uh, working environment for lots of us. But I am the person who believe that the truth is, or the good you know, solution is something in middle mm -hmm. where you can combine both uh, uh, in order to remain efficient as we used to be in during the COVID period, very efficient. Uh, on the other hand side, collaboration, brainstorming, uh, you know, um, team building uh, is, is something which I really, really missed uh, this kind of face-to-face uh, -face, uh, and strong connection kind of relationship. What is your general impression about your co-workers? So you have a responsibility for a lot of colleagues, obviously, regardless of gender, now that we established that. And it's a good wish. I hope that uh, all the industries will lean into that direction. I'm really happy about how you consider this and uh, the rest of the situation. But what is your general expression, sorry, what is your general impression about the rest of the firm you're working at, you're, you're leading? How were they able to handle the situation, the lockdown and everything. What was the most important thing coming from you as a leader towards them? What were they hoping for? Mm -hmm. What were they needing in that time of crisis? How do you see them? Uh, it's a very interesting question for me. I've never thought about, uh, uh, to summarize like this, uh, the, the last period of time. I'm always thinking about the future, so I'm not a person who is looking back uh, on the other hand side, um, um, if I try to find out now, uh, the answer to your question is that uh, number one, I told to you that uh, people are different. And that is one of the takeaways that uh, 
I need to understand that how I am personally reacting to something, I cannot request the same from the others. Okay. Because it's really personal. And uh, it doesn't mean that he or she doesn't want to work on that particular project solution. Uh, I need to accept that we are reacting this kind of very strange new things differently. Um, this is number one. Number two, of course, uh, the task had remained that we need to move on. Uh, so I try to play in different, um, you know, instruments. Uh, uh, of course, team meetings uh, uh, were one of the one of the regular. So I started daily huddles. Um, I encourage my people managers to do the same. So in the beginning, especially in distributions, especially with sales agent, we need to have weekly all staff huddle. Uh, we gave them quick information, onboarded them where we are, because the whole process needs to be, you know, um, uh, re-engineered. In both countries which I'm running, Hungary and Bulgaria, we are dominantly face-to-face -face channels using agents and brokers. Uh, and basically the new process uh, uh, was totally new for us as company as well as for them. So it was a kind of re-engineering process. Uh, very quick, very frequent information, daily hurdles and inspiration, uh, which means that we tried to find out uh, a webinarium, which was one of our success, I could imagine, that, uh, that some other companies also did it. What does it mean? It means that we engaged different speakers uh, uh, from an uh, interesting topic, which was not totally just linked to the, to the, to the profession, but doctors regarding medical situation, uh, um, uh, we engage psychologists, how to handle uh, personally this kind of uh, situation. Uh, um, uh, we engage the teacher, how to help your kids. Uh, so every week uh, we had, um, it, it was about 6 p.m. Uh, so everybody ran the whole session of the day and then we have this webinar. Then we engaged all the customers. It was also exciting for us. So it was, uh, when there is one webinarium when we've been 600 all in all okay. uh, here in Hungary with employees, uh, with uh, salespersons as well as customers. Uh, so it was a new kind of, um, uh, um, you know, uh, reality, um, which created excitement for them as well. So frequent communication, daily hurdles, weekly hurdles, and giving them content to help them to digest the situation okay. and let them know that you are not alone at all. You are part of a community and we as community, we are going to survive together. And we, of course, a life insurance company, it's our duty to provide this help to our customers because our customers also lost a little bit. Also in Bulgaria, uh, I think uh, one of the key uh, success was that this kind of really regular uh, meetings. I was happy to engage also my, my regional uh, 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 superiors and bosses, uh, the head of the EMIRA region, the Austin was also participating in two of the meetings uh, uh, because it was also important uh, to engage them and show them that, uh, that you know, we, what we are doing and also they could give a really quick overview. There is another topic which is, I think, very important, quick decision making. Uh, the levers disappeared. So whenever somebody had a good idea or somebody had found out something, I was happy to receive a call, a message, um, a call. I had nothing to do. I was at home. So I think everybody were available, accessible, and that was very important in the beginning. So don't use the route, what the you usually, the chain of command, the, chain, the hierarchy that much. Jump, come, go, okay. say, tell, share. So we need more frequent communication. We need transparent communication. We need more empathy. And also you have to work in a more, even more democratic environment, right? So it's and really important that they will be able to Go exactly. to their leaders, express yeah. what they have in their minds. And probably, if you don't mind, I would mention something which just came to my mind, that everything started with me, I think. 
Yeah, because you know, I, I, I also had time, not in the beginning, in the beginning I was so energetic, exciting, because I found out that there is an emergency situation, so this is my duty, I need to de be there and I need to show the way. Somewhere in beginning of May, middle of May, where you know, everybody already accepted that you know, we have this kind of new normal, a business went, uh, we closed an, an unbelievably successful April, for example. Uh, uh, I, I'm really proud that Hungary was the, on the top of holding me uh, within my company. Um, but in May, I found out that I'm starting to, to lose my energy, and I'm starting to, uh, so I was, a little bit fed about the situation personally and uh, and I think it was very important that I found it out that I need to do something with myself because I will be the obstacle. Okay. Um, so I think this is also uh, That's probably what I can... some sharp self-reflection there. I, I really really are uh, honest with everyone uh, uh, but if I'm not honest with myself and I'm not find, I'm finding out that I need to do so what I realized that I need to do something different um, so I had some coaching session, I, 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 I doubled my training, you know, rushing hours in the morning. Uh, so I, I, I tried to find out something different and then step by step I found out that I recovered. But I was one of the most happiest person when the lockdown was over, I'm telling the <laughs> I truth. I can imagine. Uh, when we look at, into the future and we try to imagine the new normal that we are heading towards too, because obviously we are not there yet news about a possible, uh, you know, second wave and everything, we are still not quite sure what to expect by the end of the year or maybe about 2021. But as you said, show must go on, not even the business have to go on, but also all the thinking, all the strategy making needs to go on, obviously. Now, given this weird situation where you meet someone who was able to skip these last few months, I don't know, some sci-fi setting, like someone was, you know, uh, in hibernation and suddenly waking up after six months, and uh, you have to brief him or her what's been happening. What would you propose that we need to bring on into the new era? And what are the tools and weird things that you think should be left behind? Because obviously the industry is changing. Obviously how we handle office space, how we handle leadership, how we handle communication, how you handle insurance, everything is changing. What is it that you would carry into the new age and what is it that you would rather just leave behind and forget about it? So first of all, what we need to carry on and we need to strengthen even more, especially here in the sea region, is the purpose of the whole insurance. Uh, uh, this is risk, all about risk management and, uh, and especially in the sea region uh, and in my countries, it's, there are still so many things to do. Uh, people are underinsured, uh, not just because they don't have, but also those who have, uh, the limits what they have is really, really low. Um, this is number one. Number two is, uh, is uh, uh, we need to be more educated and we, we need to invest more to education. Uh, uh, and this is something which at the moment, uh, especially after the crisis, after 2008, I think, uh, because of the cost uh, cutting, the budget constraint, constraint uh, probably uh, this is a, an area where everybody doing something. But, uh, but I think we need to continue because uh, the awareness about uh, insurance is, is still very, very low. Um, uh, I also would put to, uh, to my future bag, uh, uh, if I could use this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this picture, um, uh, the people. Um, I'm working especially on life insurance. Uh, uh, I know that everything is possible via web, Zoom, FaceTime, but I do believe still that the that the, um, uh, that the first discussion, the connection, the connection between people um, are, are needed to continue to this business. Uh, uh, why? Because um, we were able to uh, manage a sales discussion via Webex, but basically very few uh, successful sales was with really 
original customer. I mean, when the agent and the customer meet at first time via Webex. Basically, what we have used are already well-known people or people who already had a personal touch. So we, we had a little bit of credit, a personal credit, uh, to start a discussion about uh, financial security and risk management. Uh, so this is somehow uh, where we need to strongly work on how we can combine the two things successfully. Uh, because for sure, sure, portfolio meetings, for sure, uh, anniversary meetings uh, and all the other connections. Uh, for sure, for anti-money laundering uh, kind of discussion and, uh, uh, and authorization of the customer, it's the best way to do the, the video authentication, for sure, for the central offices. However, uh, I think uh, the most important that what we need to leave behind us is that this business should be more flexible. This business should be more digitalized. And this business should be more um, open mm -hmm. for new kind of things, including leadership, including uh, all the new ways of thinking, what, for example, the, the startups are representing. So I think this is my personal package. I would leave all this old fashioned stuff and I would put the good old ones, which is personal connection, very frequent communication with customer, more frequent than we, we are doing at the moment, and nevertheless, a combination of face-to-face -face and digital connections. Thank you so much. I just have only one question left that is about the community of Magic of Innovation, which you have been a part for years now. Do you have any message for the viewers, for all the insurance enthusiasts, how should they handle this interesting situation that we are in right now? And what do you think how a movie, a program, a conference, a digital conference like this should be approached? What is your best piece of advice for insurance enthusiasts? So first of all, I, I was so lucky to join to this industry 20, 21 years ago. I think I'm, I'm amazed about the people um, this is an industry where people are real people, not just professionalists. So first of all, I would really recommend all of us to, to really keep the connection, share the knowledge and encourage each other uh, because this industry uh, should flourishing furthermore, but we need lots of lots of new things and openness to digest these new things. And uh, I would also recommend for ourselves uh, to, um, to, to find out the way how we can communicate uh, to, to, the, to, the, uh, to the wider ecosystem that insurance is one of the most important things uh, in, for, for countries, for nationalities, uh, for, for, for communities, because time like COVID will come more frequently than in the past. So I think it's time to be not just good at, but uh, communicate, educate our surrounding uh, and let the people know that insurance is a must uh, for everyone in order to be prepared for the next situation like COVID. Judith, thank you so much. As you heard, probably not for the first time and not for the last, things are getting more and more serious and the stakes are getting higher and higher for this industry. So thank you once again. Thank you very much.